Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. Swing fest, swing fest, swing fest. Oh, I believe this event is in St. Petersburg, Russia. Hello folks, my name is Jamin Jackson. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. I am your host, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I am here to judge another Jack and Jill competition. Aside from dancing and creating new ways to do Lindy Hop, I love judging competitions. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I'm gonna give you my opinion of this Jack and Jill competition at St. Petersburg, Russia's event called Swing Fest 2019. This feels like a familiar event. Uh, I think I, I went to this event one time. It was like oh, 2000 something, 14, 15. It was a long time ago. <clears throat> but I do remember uh, having a good time. I believe it was, I believe it was over the holidays. No, no, no. It was during, ho it was during Halloween. It was during Halloween. It was really cold. Uh, but I had a good time. It was my first time in Russia. And I haven't really been keeping an eye out on a lot of the dancers there. So I'm curious to see who's going to be in this competition because I think it's an open, which simply means that it's, the level is a little lower than the advanced and maybe invitational levels, but I don't sleep on the open level. That's the level where people come in with their knowledge level really low, but their excitement and fervor and creativity is really, really high. So I'm going to be looking, number one, to see which, which couple, actually I'm going to look at two couples, to see if they... Um, are the, the sharpest when it comes to, you know, one of the things I look at, which is control. That's the, that's the main thing I look at when you're a new dancer is to see if you can control the actual technique, if you're a leader and if you're a follower. And so if it's there, you're gonna be like top two. And then I'm gonna be looking at creativity. I'm gonna be a little forgiving on the timing and things like that. It requires you to have a little bit more control of the technique to manipulate uh, the timing uh, when you want to do things with your partner. So that's okay. I'm going to be looking at control and I'm going to be looking at creativity. Creativity. It's one of my favorite things. So let's see what happens. And here we go. Okie dokie. I know that guy. I, I think that's the organizer. Not dancing, but in front of him. I think he's judging. Very good. Very good. I tell you what, this couple's doing so far so good on the control. I'm really impressed by uh, the leader not doing too much and waiting to allow his, his partner to move freely. Follower doesn't look like she's freaking out, <laughs> right? All right, here we go, here we go. Number two. Okay. 
Okay, okay. Not afraid to kind of take some risks and slide a little bit. Oh, I saw that footwork. <laughs> yes, yes. Looking good so far, guys. This is looking good. <laughs> they like that shake. Alright, there's the other car. I think this is... No, it's not the last one. Got a few more.
right. All right, let's see if they do something else. I don't know if they are. Maybe it's going to be a fast one. Let's see. See if they speed it up a little bit. All right. I guess this is another couple, yeah, this is another one.
I gotta tell you, this is a long competition. Especially it being mid-tempo. That's really interesting. But I can tell you who I'm liking so far.
guys. This looks like the all skate. And it's coming down to the wire. might go down as the longest competition I have ever sat and watched. <laughs> that was long. I think it was almost 20 minutes. That's pretty cool though. Those dancers continued to go and many of them continued to wow me. What's great about what I saw is that they switched up partners a couple of times and so I got a chance to kind of really see who these dancers' personalities really were and that was great. They also switched up the tempo a little bit. So it was mid-tempo throughout most of the competition, but then they sped it up and I was able to kind of, in a way, see the dancers from a totally different perspective. I could see their strengths when it was slow. I could also see their strengths when it was a little bit faster and it really gave me a little bit more perspective on why I judge opens a little bit different than everybody else. Because both, the technique and creativity are super important. I'm not one to just say, get into Lindy Hop and make up the rules as you go, uh, do whatever you wanna do, cause that ain't right, that ain't right. You know, I when I first got into the dance, I came in as a dancer who has been dancing for 20 years. I've been a hip hop guy, lots of tours, lots of choreography, and when I came into Lindy Hop, I had to humble myself and literally figure out how to do the technique, even though I had a, a crazy amount of ideas in my head that I thought I could lead, but I really couldn't do it. <laughs> I had to basically go humble myself and learn this technique the right way. And so I did that. And at the same time, I didn't lose my creativity. So for me as a judge, that's the perspective I have. If you can already dance and you get into Lindy Hop, you got a lot of ideas, but you can't do the technique, I'm going to be hard on you because a lot of people didn't do that. A lot of people who came in the scene before you. So I hope, I hope you guys can take that with uh, uh, some perspective. So without further ado, let me get into this. Let me get into who I liked and why. Let me start with the followers. There was one of the followers I really liked because of her energy. And she was a little taller, which typically is different. For taller dancers, normally they're uh, timid. Usually the ones that I see, they tend to kind of keep their limbs in a little bit. They they usually take really, really big steps and, and sometimes it looks a little clunky, but one of the ones who was actually tall and looked like they were in control of their body and I loved her energy was the follower who had all tan. She had like a tan dress on. I think she had uh, blonde hair. I like to call it yellow hair. And uh, she, yeah, she was great. I think it's like a pinkish tan dress. Yeah, I think the lighting is kind of changing the color, but I loved her dancing. She's one to watch out for. I don't know her name, but I really enjoyed it, uh, mainly because she had control of her own body. Now, obviously there's things that every person can do to get better as a follower. And you know, we talk a lot about those things. There's just some simple things as a follower. If you just know these couple of things, then you can really accelerate your learning curve. And I'm sure she can find out um, you know, a lot more of those details um, in her own dancing where she's at. But I still liked what she had to offer. I wasn't too strict on the, the, the control aspect, the technique part. I, what I liked that was controlled wasn't so much what she was doing with her partner, but what she was doing within her own body. She wasn't just flopping around and taking a really big step, none of that. She had control of her body and I love the energy. So, awesome dancing. The second follower I really liked, she had short hair. She had a white shirt, I think it was like black jeans. Um, she had a lot of energy too. She was actually my favorite one out of all the followers. And she had this ability to hit the moves. So it's, it's really hard. There's a dichotomy in following where you're kind of flowing based on the energy and then sometimes you, well, let me back that up. Let me just say you're following based on energy and then sometimes your skill is following based on visual cues, like on what you want to hit to the music. 
So some followers are really good at that. They can hear the music and they can do certain movements that don't necessarily take away what's happening, but it can add value to it without interrupting what the leader might set up next. I think that's what I wanted to say. And these followers, there's very few of them that can do that. Some of, are just, some of them just have that natural ability to hear the music and be able to add a punching movement that hits the beat instead of flows through the beat uh, without taking away what the energy, what the leader was trying to intend, right? It's a, it's a delicate balance. And she had that. She had that. That's one follower I would continue to watch um, if I was someone like looking for the next couple of dancers to do some things in the future for the art form. So I hope she keeps dancing. I don't know who she is, but I liked it. It was good. I was looking for her for her second set. The first time I was like, yep, that's she's she's the one. And I was waiting for that fast set to see if it would be similar. And it was. It was. So I wasn't deceived. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's get into the leaders. This was a little bit more difficult because I think it's harder to actually lead than it is to follow. Even though our role doesn't take as much uh, discipline, it's different. We just set things up. We can look any way we want to do doing that, but we literally just set things up. So most of our problem as leaders is we have to know how to set things up without hurting our partner and covering if something goes wrong and still at the same time looking good and still dancing on beat. And sometimes that's just overwhelming for leaders who just start off. So I applaud this leader for just being able to control the technique, not feel rushed by their partner's energy, but simply just following through with the technique. And that leader for me, uh, he had the, the, the gray and tan shirt and he had uh, like, it was like tan pants. Yeah, it was, it was a grayish white shirt with tan pants. He was really tall and I loved his ability to control what he was doing. It is super hard for taller guys to actually look good and lead at the same time. Sometimes you can lead stuff and feel like you're looking good, but visually like the lines might be off a little bit or you know, it, it just looks cl clumsy and like you don't really know what to do with your own body. But he simply didn't have that. I mean, there's there's very few dancers I think of, uh, dancers that I really admire, friends of mine who taught me a lot of stuff, uh, Todd Yannacone, Peter Strom. Those are really tall dancers who have control of the technique with their partner, but they also know how to manipulate their body to still look good while they're leading. This dancer had that quality. He had that in the slow set. He had it in the fast set. And again, I was looking for him. I was going to say, you know, is this real? Is this the real deal? His, his most valuable thing to me as a judge was his ability to control the technique. There was another guy that was close to him. He also had gray and white on. Um, he was a taller guy. I think he had darker hair. But, but those two had that control the most for me. Now, the leader who had the most creativity, who was willing to just try different things, um, I wish he would have had a little bit more control, and that's okay, because when at the open level, I don't judge too harshly on the control, but it is extremely important to me. But that really important ingredient that you don't want to forget as you gain more control is the hardest thing to maintain. It's super easy to get good at the technique, but it's super hard to have this other quality that this dancer had. And he had like a blonde beard and a blonde like hair like at the top. I don't know if you would call it blonde. I think it was the lighting. And he was all in like white or so. Um, I loved his energy and I loved his creativity. He was not scared. <laughs> he was not scared to like take risk. I remember that feeling when I first started dancing, like not knowing what the limits are, not knowing really what the rules are, like what you're supposed to do. The, the, I didn't even know the timing of the music. I'm just coming in raw. And he had that rawness in his just way of leading. And I hope he doesn't lose that because, of course, he's going to get better at polishing and smoothing things over, m moving with his partner. That part's easy. That part's easy. So I wasn't totally looking at that. Like I said before, I was most impressed out of all the dancers with this dancer because of his energy and his ability to just try different things without fear. And each partner that he danced with just went with it. Sometimes things worked out. Sometimes they didn't. But they just kept going, and that's important, is to have that 
fearlessness to just keep going and to try different things within reason that you don't kill your partner and uh it looks like everybody made it uh who danced with him so anyways those are my top dancers on this like i said i love open lindy hop competitions and i hope these dancers continue to be in love with the dance this is the most critical time in lindy hop is when you first start dancing to get good at the technique but most importantly figure out who you are and fall in love with who you are in a good way when it comes to the dance because a lot of times you're going to want to start imitating other dancers and you'll start losing yourself trying to get the approval of judges and winning competitions and then eventually you end up copying these people better than who they are and then you just start hating your dancing is because you realize you you've become too afraid to actually be yourself and try different things. So please, please don't lose who you are. You guys are amazing. I'm loving what I'm seeing. Uh, big shout out to everybody else who competed. It's not easy putting yourself out there to be criticized by the audience and to, to have your moves or your uh, mistakes put out there on the internet. That's forever. Um, big shout out to you guys. Um, I, I do remember that time when I first started competing, I like I was doing crazy stuff. And I went out in a jam circle, did like a cartwheel and like drop kicked my partner in the face and didn't even know. And it's somewhere it's somewhere out there on the internet. But anyway, I know the fear of having to get out there and make a mistake. So keep being bold, keep trying different things, keep staying coachable, please keep learning. If you guys are taking classes right now, continue to take class. Find some of these dancers out there or some of the, the teachers that were at that event and continue to learn from them. It's best for you to continue to do that. Um, if you're wanting to get good at Lindy Hop quickly, some of you followers were, were out there and you're just looking at them, you're like, man, how are they able to do that? There's only four concepts. If you know these four concepts, you're 90% there. But if you can do them, you've mastered the technique. Everything else is relative. Everything else is subjective. And really, it's more about how you want to look doing those four things. So um, if you want to check that out, um, come visit our school at uh, patreon.com, uh, Street Smart Swing. Or if you want to check out some of our free courses, you can do that. Uh, below, we got about 30 different courses. Um, just to kind of give you a feel of our philosophy of approaching this dance, we like to make sure everything is streamlined and that it is objective or subjective so you know how to determine the difference and not get things twisted and confused so that you end up focusing more on the technique and not discovering who you are as a dancer and adding your unique uh, fingerprint to this art form so check those things out what do you guys think let me know in the comments section who you thought should have won this competition if i don't see you in one of our classes online hopefully i will see you in the next reaction video in that comment section take care